Hanging out at the production facility, we call it the kitchen table too, at Laundry Room Records in Cotopaxi, Colorado, but the laundry room is where the recording part happens. This is production, like we said. Well, I've been meaning to do an all-instrumental album for eons, and this year I finally got around to it. Did it a little differently than my first album, which was in a really small recording studio. Here I did it completely at home, on a 24-channel Tascam digital recorder, up here. Mixed and mastered it up here. And then when I got it all done, I started burning some CDs on my laptop, kind of like this, bringing them with me to shows, and people were actually buying them, bless them. But as time went by, I got more and more songs together and it was starting to look like a real album. So when I had a master, I uh, sent it off to disc makers and very economically got them to send me a few hundred of them in white Tyvek sleeves with all the information about the album printed on top of this picture I took of some of my partial capos that I use for a lot of my playing. So pretty cool. I had a little plan for more of a cover though because our good friend Carolyn Stewart is an amazing artist and she lives in Vermont but she comes to Colorado a lot and while she was here we were talking about it and when she went back to Vermont shortly later I got this in the mail and I thought wow that's an awesome album cover of course with a rubber stamp as the method to put it on the Tyvek sleeves, it's kind of detailed, so I wasn't sure if it would really translate. I might have been a little nervous about getting called the Wizard of Cotopaxi, but that was because the art magazine said I was Cotopaxi's guitar wizard. <laughs> but at any rate, I told her that I thought it was great, but a simpler design might work better with the rubber stamp. So she sent me some more. She sent me this one, and this one sort of has an idea from a picture of a lunar eclipse up here I took last year, and then she sent this one, and I knew we were there. I love the line drawing of the guitar and the lightning bolts and the lunar shape and the suggestion of the guitar without it all being drawn out. It's awesome. Now, lucky for me, I had another album a little while back, and like most independent projects, it was a million seller. That means you have a million in your seller, right? So, of the couple left in my seller, I cut where my name is written on the bottom off of one, and super glued it to this, and took a photograph of it, and sent it off to the rubber stamp company. And a little while later, this came in the mail. Just what Carolyn drew. And a big old stamp pad. And next thing you knew, the labor's free here. So we have a little cottage industry going. Fortunately, there aren't too awful many of them. Oh, I didn't show you this rubber stamp company put this rendering of the design right on the back of the stamp so I guess if you had like a craft shop and you were really doing a number of designs you could tell what was what pretty readily but I just have the one and I'm grateful for it I have this little finger micrometer method of lining things up quick decisive stamp Pull it off of there. Presto changeo. Carefully manhandle the CD. You can't leave it in there while you stamp it because it's not flat and it wouldn't get as good an image. But luckily, the image is around the edges, so it's easy to avoid touching it while you're putting things together. And bingo, here's a dry one. So the finished product looks like this on one side and on the other side is all the information about what's on the CD and you can get a little dizzy if you watch that design go around on your CD player. I don't know how you do that but at any rate.
right? It's the cottage industry. What's doing other one? 